Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sean Arnold. My name is JD. And today we're going to be doing a bit of a follow-up video to one which I put up on the channel earlier today or maybe yesterday. I'm not quite sure. But that was in regards to software development kits being sent out for the new Nintendo NX. Um, if you haven't seen that video already, go and check that one out. I'll go into a bit more detail on um, some of the information we already know about the NX. But um, as I said in that video, I originally made that with JD and uh, he wasn't feeling too good at the time to make it but now that he's feeling better we just wanted to have a little bit of a chat together and share this with you guys for your enjoyment hello so um i'm going to touch up on well really the big question is what does nintendo have to do in order to attract back back the audience they have lost and attract new uh, comers to their new next platform what does it, nintendo have to do to get back into the race and um we came up with seven different topics, and the first one which we did was um, for um, what I just titled it as Know That You Cannot Beat The PlayStation 4. Now, um, I do want to just clarify on what I said that bef uh, beforehand. I don't, I'm not to say, I'm not marking out as like a PlayStation fanboy or whatnot, but in essence what I just meant was that if Nintendo's going to try to just offer the same kind of service which PlayStation 4 does, plus with some Mario Nintendo licensed games on top of it, it's not going to work for them. So, um, yeah, what are, what are your thoughts on that, JD? Well, for me, when when I was younger, Nintendo is like the first console I got. Yeah, and most then people. For, so, like, I got that console, and then from there is when I went on to PlayStation and stuff like that. Mm. And I think they, maybe if they focused on maybe trying to, those people and those kids that get it when they're first, like, when they when they the first thing they get is a Nintendo. Say they get the Nintendo NX for Christmas and they're five years old. They have to keep them there. They can't. They have to keep them, like hooked on their console. If you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like like it's like a good book or something. If if the first page is boring, you're not gonna read the book. But if it's interesting and it what it makes you want to read it, you're gonna stay with it. I think that's um something that kind of now that you've put it that way. I think that's something that kind of rings true for a lot of Nintendo fans. In that a lot of the games that people like to play on Nintendo are there because that was their first. That was their first console. That was their first game. My first game was Super Mario Bros. 3. And so every now and then when I see a new Mario game, I, I'm, I like to go back to it and say, that, Oh, wow, I remember this character. Yeah, this was fun back in the day. I think that's a lot of driving of a driving factor for Nintendo stuff. But um, I just don't know if that's enough in this day and age them really to um i don't think nostalgia alone is enough to make sales in this day and age i, I think um i think a lot of um i think how do i put this i think they need to have something which differentiates themselves from the rest of the competition they need to have something which and they already do they already tried to they already tried with the gamepad you know the Wii was very very innovative and very very different yeah nintendo nintendo is always a console with like that kind of gimmick yeah sometimes it works out for them sometimes it doesn't yeah they're always trying to write they're trying to always be the market leader which i admire you know always trying to do something different is um something we try to do here as well we don't just try to copy other people but sometimes it can hit or miss and when it misses it misses really really bad and when it's a hit it's really really good and um i i have a feeling that's probably gonna be what they're gonna try to do again but um I think a lot of people just want their faith restored in the Nintendo brand. Yeah. And they just want to be able to believe that this is a console which I can buy and I'm actually going to use. Because twice now I've had these two, the last two consoles I've bought for a while, I've played them for a while. Actually, no, free, including the Nintendo 2DS. And then once I've had my fun with them, they just sit on the shelf, keep collecting dust. Just waiting for Bravely Second. Yeah, big time. Okay, so that was number one. Just um, we hope that Nintendo does something different to differentiate themselves, but um, also it, um, restores faith in um, current fans of their work. The number two idea that which I had on here was backwards compatibility. I think it's absolutely vital that Nintendo is um, backwards compatible with their current library of Wii U games. I um, if they're gonna be bringing out. Um, a new console within the next year or two I don't think personally that people are ready to have a new version of their current lineup of games of Smash, Mario Kart, 
Um, Zelda Wii U, some people are, are guessing that maybe Zelda Wii U will come out both on the Wii U and on the NX. Um, or what, what, whatever it's going to be called. Yeah. I just don't think um, people are ready to get a new version of their current set of games. The so, Wii U actually hasn't actually been out for such a long time. Oh. Yeah, it came out what, in 2012, I think. It feels like that. It feels like that. I would have to check to be sure. But, um, you know, they didn't have the strongest launch title to begin with, but then um, they started Nintendo to build it up. Land. They started to build it up slowly. But um, I think it wasn't 2012 when the last time they were at E3, so um, I think you're about right on that. But, um, yeah, I just think um, I don't... Um, I think backwards compatibility is going to be important. I think it's a way that they can differentiate themselves from Sony and from uh, Microsoft who are kind of backpedaling on backwards compatibility. They're trying to find ways to sell you your old games again through services like PlayStation Now but um, and whatever Xbox is called. But, um, you know, Nintendo, I think, has a good option here just to say, no, you can just put in your old disc into your um, new console and it will just work. Yeah, the problem with it, the problem with the Wii U was that, oh, the the Wii has the motion control as a sensor bar and it just... Oh, yeah. It's just effort to set up. Yeah, I didn't actually mention that um, in the video. Um, no, I didn't acknowledge the fact that the Wii U is backwards compatible, but the thing is, is that going backwards to the Wii is difficult. Like you said, it's you got to get all those pieces of equipment out and not a lot of people want to do that. Plus, it was the backwards compatibility for the Wii was weird because it was like you would hit the Wii button and then the system would shut down and turn into the Wii U, Wii mode to emulate it. So it wasn't like you just put in your disc and go. It was like... What, so it was basically it turned into a Wii? Yeah, it was like an emulator. Like, you started up this Wii emulator and so then they had the Wii channel, home, the old Wii channel home screen and it, it just didn't look really good to my opinion. Um, no, I just want it just to be as simple as, like the PlayStation 2, you put in a disc, you play it. Simple. You know, um, so yeah, I think backwards compatibility is important. Um, I think I gave a really good example in the video that I did, but I'll give it again here. Just imagine the next um, Nintendo NX comes out, and on day one they say, listen, we'll give you whatever that copy of Nintendo Land or Wii Sports is going to be, to show off the power of the console, plus we'll give you a free copy of Smash Brothers for Wii U, and a free copy of Mario Kart as a downloadable code. I think that would get tons of people just to say, yeah, yeah, I'll buy that straight one. Day one, that's um, that's really really good value. Yeah, it doesn't cost them that much to give them a code. No, they don't have to produce anything. None whatsoever. Not really. No, you just have to download from a server. Okay, so number three, which I had on my list before, was open up the platform to make it easier for third parties to port their games. What What do you think about that? Getting more okay. third parties in. Well, um, I don't mean to like copy from someone else, but MatPat made a video, Game Theory made a video about how why the Wii, the Wii U was a fail. Yeah. And he said that one of the big reasons was it's so difficult for a person who made a game for the PS4 or PS3 to move it over to the Wii U or because of the gamepad. It makes it so... Di it's not that, that hard. Well, I say it's not that hard. Yeah, we're not game it, developers. It, it, we don't know. It's easier to move a game from Xbox to PS4 yeah. with, with a similar controller, similar um, button layout, Just stuff the like lines, that, yeah. um, to a Wii U, which has a gamepad, so you have to try integrate a gamepad, because it's not going to... It's not going to look nice if you've got a gamepad and it's just a black screen on the gamepad. Some games did that. Even some first-party games. I think... Um, which one was it? I think it was even like Donkey Kong kind of, uh, Tropical Freeze didn't use the gamepad much. Um, it's because it's not... To be honest, it's not really necessary. Yeah, you, you don't want to feel would've, like you're it forced been, to It would have been better if they used did something like, oh, link the, your 3DS to your Wii U or something. No, I don't think they should get rid of using the Wii um, the gamepad completely. I, I, I think, think it should have been a separate thing. I think maybe instead of making it come with mm -hmm. and ha have to use it, it can be a thing that developers can use if they would like and it's uh, optional. I don't think anyone would have used it. If it was, I don't think... If anyone said to me, listen, you can save £50 off of the price of your console, just leave the gamepad behind, I would have left the gamepad behind. Um, True. So that's kind of what they do. It's like the Kinect. They try to force it upon you, get you to use it, get you interested in it, and then hope people will develop for it later. But like the Kinect, uh, it wasn't really too well received. Um, but, I mean... I mean, it doesn't make sense to me that um, for the Wii U, they would force the gamepad on you, but... 
for me to get a standard controller, I would have to pay an extra forty pounds, and that was hard to get those controllers. Forty pounds to get a pro controller to use, and then if you wanted to play Smash and you wanted to use your old GameCube controller, you had to buy an adapter yeah. in order to connect your old GameCube controller to play Too on the console. Too many things to buy just it was to make stupid. it comfortable for you. Plus, and if you wanted to play your old Wii games, you had to get a Wii remote out, and the GameCube adapter only worked with Smash. You couldn't use it for no other games. It was just silly. It was just silly. You shouldn't. Uh, I don't, the Wii, you know you, the Wii, the Wii didn't have a problem with putting uh, GameCube adapters on the on the top. So I don't understand why. It, exactly. It was a Do you know what? I completely forgot about that. They had a slot. You just plugged it in, and that's how I always play my Wii games. I always I've, played with the controller. You know, I've never ever played Smash on the Wii with a Wii remote. I always it use Game controller. Good. It doesn't Game feel good. GameCube controller. And um, yeah, no. But I think they the next console should support the gamepad. Just so that um, the current library can be backwards compatible, because there are some games you're not going to be able to run without the gamepad. Um, I think. No, um, I think they should just stick to a like a. But they should they give you should, a controller. They, the pro controller should be their controller, their yeah, main controller. They should, they should give you the pro controller in the box. But if you have a Wii pad with already a Wii U pad. You can use the Wii U pad to play your old Wii U games. I think that would be fine. Because like the the fact that you can move away from your Wii or change that's, change the input really on cool. your TV, that's good. It's really cool. Just... I beat Bayonetta on my Wii U gamepad because I just used it like a separate TV. I used it like a TV. I went in a place in my house which didn't have a big screen TV. I just pull it. Up, I just stuck it up and I used my Pro controller to play it with the pad on the TV. I think that's really. I think the pad has some really good uses. It's because like that. The, especially because the pad screen is quite it's quite big yeah. compared to like a it's not bad a PSVR or a DS screen. Yeah, so um, you could easily watch like Netflix or YouTube on that. That's no problem whatsoever. It's not a phone screen size. It's quite big. It is, but um, um, I think um, but for the sake of other developers being able to bring their games to the Wii and the next console, whatever it's going to be called. They just need to make sure that it's easier for third-party developers to be able to develop for it. Just uh, make it easy as possible. Um, so then we got number four. Number four, which I wrote, was um, support content creators. Now, when I say content creators, I mean people like ourselves, people who uh, like to do artwork, do YouTube, do music. Get Support those people more through your platform. Um, I don't think I really have anything more to add to that than what I said in the last video, so I'm just going to reiterate what I said there. Um, um, the thing I love about the PlayStation 4 is that when you get it out of the box, you have everything you need in order to upload, edit your footage, and uh, make your own videos and share them with also your Also with Xbox, with you have people. the Xbox Snap and the Xbox Record. Is that So uh, Xbox has it too. I've never used an Xbox One, so I, don't, I wasn't able to quote on that, but... Yeah, I'm sure Xbox has all of those functions too. Um, that's just the way people are nowadays. People like sharing their experiences. Where it, we live in a social media driven um, time. And um, Nintendo seem to be stuck in the past. They seem to be stuck in this era of um, gaming is almost like an individual experience. It's something you play in your house with your friends on the couch. And yes, that's still true. And people still want to do that. But, a lot of um, the majority of gaming is now online. So. Yeah, absolutely, and people want to share their experiences. If Twitch streamers are are big, and they they don't want to go through the hassle. I think I think it just makes it easier for them. Absolutely. I mean, if they can just hit a button record, it makes it a lot easier. Also, Nintendo are funny with their games being put on the internet as well. Well, there's the Nintendo Creator Program. You know that was so badly received. I received so much press for them. And I kind of understand... What was that? I forgot. What it was, was um, it was a service where if you are a content creator and you like uploading um, uh, videos with Nintendo footage in them, um, by default, if you upload videos with Nintendo footage in them, you run the risk of being hit by Content ID, and then Content ID on YouTube will then um, um, take away any monetization at, um, that you have on the video, and then Nintendo will put up their own adverts and receive monetization from your video. So from your own work, Nintendo would claim revenue off your own work. That's bad. So they would get paid for something you did. But Nintendo Creator Program, it allows them to say, no, we've got an agreement with you, and we're going to get the money, but we're going to share some of that money with you. Well, then that's just going to stop people from playing their games. And exactly. And that's, that's less publicity for so them. You're sh and they kind of need it, to be honest. And so if you're a YouTube content creator, you would get you already share the money with YouTube. 
So then the m little money that you get out of the money that you shared after YouTube now went to Nintendo and Nintendo give you even a smaller portion of that. And a lot of people didn't like that. Now we're not big YouTubers. We don't get paid for what we do. We're not nowhere near... <laughs> We have never received a paycheck from YouTube and we have nowhere near up to the point where um, we can live off YouTube as our main income. <laughs> Maybe, what, who knows, maybe someday, but definitely nowhere near in the near future. But um, it's still off-putting to someone like myself to play a Nintendo game because of these things. I did a video last year of um, showing JD and Leo off at their first convention. And um, JD was wearing a Link hat. We got to see a guy cosplaying as Link. And I thought, okay, you know what? We're, we're walking around this convention. Let me put some Nintendo music in the background. Now, I know this isn't completely Nintendo's fault. but And they have to protect themselves. But that video, which had footage of our own making, of just us walking around at a convention, got hit by Content ID because I used some of Nintendo's property on there. And um, that's fine. I have no beef with that. But when I play a game like Helldivers and I can freely use their soundtrack, which is a first-party Sony game, um, and I know that it's not, not going to create any problems it's or just my, less hassle and my video is not going to get muted for it then it is just um, yeah like you said it's less hassle um, it deters people from wanting to do that so I think um, Nintendo need to kind of regain a positive image in the eyes of content creators and um, I think they need to just show that they support it somehow rather than are against it so um, my next topic here, number five, was make it cool to own a Nintendo again. Now this is one I put on the list really after talking with you. And um, I, you was talking to me about how no one you know talks about Nintendo or you don't even know how many people own a Nintendo. No. Honestly, if if you, if you in my school, kids my age, you go to you go to them and say, oh yeah, I was, I was playing Mario the other day. They, they'll look at you and they'll laugh. Yeah. They're laughing you because it's not cool to own a Nintendo console anymore. When you were, when you was a kid and you said, "Oh yeah, let's play Mario," yeah, that was good, but not anymore. Mm. I just well, no. Even when I was younger, like at your age group, it wasn't cool to own a Nintendo unless you played Smash. That was it. That was the only game people played on the GameCube. But uh, most people, you know, were, we were into fighting games. Uh, we were into um, shooters. And those were all on the PlayStation, PlayStation two. One and two. No, it was mostly the two, yeah. Oh. But um, and um, yeah, no, I totally agree with this. I feel like um, Nintendo is the is the console which likes to appeal to the younger audience and to families, but um, they don't really do that much anymore. But and to be honest, I I say this would help them, but to be honest, I don't think they could do that. It's hard to turn around from from what where they are now, looking at, because I personally I think that people that play Nintendo are like five to eight and then over. I over. think I think it's I think it's anyone. It, I think um, if you're young, maybe that could be like your primary console. But then I think like a lot of people are like you and I, where you get that one game, that one title, which you think, yeah, I want to play this game, like Brave yeah, New Default. I don't, I don't... And I will pick up my 2DS to go play that, that, but then it will be put down again and I will never touch that console again. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, even on the terms of family and being attracted to family, I feel like most families these days, uh, most parents, where they would fill the gap where they think, wow, I want to get my kid a game console, but I don't want them to be exposed to anything which is too... Um, out of um too adult for them or too mature for them, then Nintendo's the then way Nintendo to go. was the way to go. But nowadays they can just simply give them this smartphone. They can download a free app, say, "Oh yeah, here you go, keep yourself busy for a while." And you've got tons of games on there like Temple Rush, Temple Run, yeah, Temple, Temple Run. Run, Temple Run. There's a Sonic version of Temple Run, Clash Angry of Clans, Birds, games like that. They'll that, keep you occupied for hours. And those attract um pretty much any demographic. So Nintendo can't even fill that the gap PE of being... The teachers in my school play Temple... Not Temple Run, um, Clash of Clans. They yeah. Ha they have their own clan and everything. Yeah. Um, you know, I know so many... Uh, I know so many people who have children who give their children a tablet for their birthday or Christmas and um, never really hear them talk about uh, giving their child a Nintendo. Um, I don't know what Nintendo can do to make themselves more appealable back well, to their they, old demographic. They are, they are kind of making their entrance into the mobile gaming market, yeah i think so. um that's i think that's going to be important for them um 
so where we were just saying is that yeah we think nintendo need to appeal back to the old demographic um i think um you were starting to say that nintendo are making an entrant into the mobile market so they are going to start you um i think it would be okay for them to start using their brand on the mobile market and i think games like pokemon go are the best way to do it yeah, where they're I making th- i thought that was a- what i heard that i was listening to a, a best friends podcast and yeah. they spoke about it i thought that's a good idea that's yeah. gonna that's gonna get people to actually go don't just yeah don't go just go out and look for those pokemon and do stuff like they're that. not they're not just giving you a mario platformer game on the mobile they could easily just do that they are giving you a game which can only be played on a mobile for that experience and um, if it builds up brand awareness and gets people back into their franchises then absolutely plus they were also talking about making a movie i don't know if that's still going to go really? ahead yeah they were talking oh, about it better not be like the pokemon movies oh no 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 i think um they were approaching uh <laughs> last pokemon movie i watched i fell asleep in the middle i think we both did i think we both fell asleep in that movie that was not great <laughs> anyway let's move on to number six uh number six um um oh i said i want to play handheld games on my tv again I think um, with what they said in the NX, where it's going to have a portable component and the main console component, I'm hoping it's basically that whatever the new handheld console is going to be, you can just seamlessly swap it between your home console and your handheld console. Like, kind of like what Remote Play does on the Vita, on the Vita but uh, apparently Remote Play is busted, so it doesn't work very well. Aww. But um, and it's not even their fault. Apparently, it's due to... Um, just people's connections internet connections the signals interfere with each other at home so you can't get a good experience um but um back in the day this is even see this is the thing that makes me laugh nintendo had these great ideas back in the day and they just seem to have left them behind it for the super nintendo they had this thing called the super game boy and it was basically a cartridge you put into your super nintendo then you put your game boy game in top into that and you could play your Game Boy games on the TV. That's such a good idea. It was so good. And plus, you you would get this funny background. You could design it and whatnot. And I would play um, the Game Boy Zelda, the Game Boy Pokemon on my TV. Um, I think they should bring that back. I think that's something only Nintendo could do. There's no way really Sony and... Um, Sony had the option of doing that. But, um, you know, with the Vita TV and stuff. But um, I think Nintendo could probably do it better. Um, yeah, X- Nintendo's good at gimmicks. Xbox doesn't have really the option of doing that. Xbox doesn't even have a handheld. Exactly, and um, Nintendo's um, 3DS library still is pretty strong. You know, could you imagine if, say, two years from now, you were able to play Majora's Mask 3D on your TV? That would be good. You, I would, fi- I would actually go and pick up that game yeah. and actually check it out because um, I don't feel like playing it on the handheld, or at least I don't feel, feel like playing it on my 2DS. So yeah, I think that would be a good thing to do. And the last thing we're talking about... Oh, no. What? Bonus point. Oh, go on. Online. Don't you think Nintendo needs to integrate more things into their online system? Yeah, I think um, that's a no-brainer. I th- And I also think they need to they need to make a community they of online games. Or they need to have a game that like kickstarts their online community. I think... Like what, for example? I don't know, but... They, if, say they made a new IP... Something similar, like how they made Splatoon. Splatoon was. I was gonna say Splatoon. <laughs> yes, yeah, Splatoon was kind of okay, but then they they made mistakes like not having voice chat and making it. Oh, I I just feel like if you had they, little character voices. Stay hmm? fresh. <laughs> but that's not enough. I feel like if they, because a lot of people buy consoles because they want to play online with their friends. I think Nintendo's quite skeptical with online because they have this whole family friendly approach and they know that people online can be dicks and um that's why they have they want to keep it so that if you they want to stay i don't know it's weird they want to stay um well then maybe they want to stay positive in the eyes of like a parent so that their child isn't at risk when they play online and this is why they did the friend code system and um they didn't they never had voice chat um, for I think a it's game com- like Splatoon maybe not but if they well, made a I game think, that I, I reaches think, 15 I, I or 12 rated I don't think it's necessary at all I don't think it's necessary at all I think period if you are a parent and you're worried about your kid being um, trolled on online or being offended by someone online or hearing someone rude they shouldn't be online to begin with you know yeah. 
If that's what you're worried about, they shouldn't be playing with strangers online to begin with. Yeah, that I think that's a fair point. You know, Nintendo, sh- you should not be trying to protect other people's kids. You know, um, I think there are obviously tons of kids that play online. You can't get away from playing a game like um, Call of Duty without hearing like a 12-year-old guy. Oh my God, that's so bad. But um, Leo, <laughs> Leo, <laughs> Leo. But um, you know that's so annoying, man. But um, if you're, I mean, that's that's the parent's choice to do that. Nintendo, you don't need to come up with those solutions. You know, um, just give people a decent robust online system and keep them playing online you know um don't make it so like in splatoon you have like a lobby where you hang out with people make it that's lame yeah make it no that's what a lot of games used to do but um make it like um make it like the playstation 4 so as soon as you turn on your console you can see who's online you can chat to people start a party chat to them and yeah, that, was, that, that. That, that would make it more... They kind of did have that. You, you remember they had that little Wii Universe thing where you could see who's online and then you could see people like, around a game? Yeah. Do you remember that? That little yeah. hub thing? But that wasn't really... That wasn't know. much. No, it's not really what what people are talking about. Um, yeah, online's a big one. And so the last point we had on the list was um, the name. Um, the Wii U... Um, I watched another video after making that video and talking about this with you and I kind of understood it and they said that um, the gimmick behind the name was we was supposed to be the idea of playing with other people and then Wii U was their attempt to show hardcore gamers that they were getting back into the individual experience hardcore Wii U yeah so the idea is just that it was used to be we but now it's about you it's all you um, I thought it was dumb I still think it was dumb yeah. I think um, no one likes the name. I think having new Super Mario Brothers Wii U, sorry, you, or Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U, or Super Smash Brothers for the Nintendo DS was lame. Um, yeah, the, I think Nintendo struggles with naming things. Um, just, I don't know what they're going to call the next one, but just make it simple. Make it simple, make it elegant. Call it the Nintendo NX if you want to. Call it whatever. Well, it's, you... it's better than the Wii U. What would you give it? What name what? would you come up with? This, uh, the SNES Two. Oh my God! If they called it the SNES Two, <laughs> they would get so much hype from people. If they called it the Super, if they came out with an improved version of the Super Nintendo, man, they would kill it. The SNES Two. They that... would. They would kill it. See, Reggie, see how easy it was for me to come up with that name. Reggie, you need to hire this boy. <laughs> this guy is going to make you so much money. And it's free. <laughs> that was free. <laughs> oh, I, I, I can't top that. I think that was good. Super Nintendo 2, that would that would kill it. Reggie. Ultra Nintendo. Nah, nah. Super Nintendo 2. So, yeah, there there you go, guys. Um, this is a bit more about us just chatting about the Nintendo NX. Are you excited for it? Kind of, but I'm excited to watch other people play. I would not pick it up myself, prob- most probably. Mm, I'm not. Um, I'm not excited, but I am interested to see what they do. Yeah. You know, um, Nintendo lost Iwata this year. They have a new president now. Um, it's gonna. Like, that guy's a businessman, though. He's not. He's not. A... Oh no, no, he's been in the company for a while. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna knock him. Apparently, he he worked on a few games. Okay. Um, you know, and he has a uh, Miyamoto there as kind of like his creative advisor. I I thought Miyamoto was gonna become new head of Nintendo. Miyamoto is not a business guy. I would not. I, I I know for. I don't know Miyamoto personally, but I would not be able to work with Miyamoto as my boss. He just seems too crazy. Too nice. Not even that. It's just like um, yeah, he's really nice, but he seems like he's the artistic type of guy. Who that you know? Um, if we're working on an artistic project, fine. We follow your artistic wisdom, but when it comes to money and business. You know, he could be that the kind of guy that says, "Oh, I don't worry about it. Just work for free tomorrow." <laughs> He'd be like, "That not me and my. I've got kids to feed. I've got family. Bring them too." <laughs> you know, he. Um, I don't know. If he he has it to run a multi um corporate multinational corporation, but um, it'll be interesting to see what Nintendo do. Um, I hope they're at E three next year, like actually in presence, yeah. not just on a video. I hope um, you know, they make the comeback for that. I know they wasn't able to because Iwata wasn't well. 
But um, I hope um, Nintendo does come back with Fall Force. I hope we can get excited for Nintendo games again. Um, I would love to play a solid new Metroid game. And, um, yeah, they haven't been doing much of that. Metroid Heroes. Let me ask you something real quick before we end the video. Um, Xbox One. What type of genre do you associate most with that Xbox? Call you... First person shooters. Yeah. PlayStation 4. Uh, f- RPGs. Damn. I was worried about that. Why? I was thinking to myself, hmm, if uh, if Xbox, um, if Nintendo could align themselves as being the home for this type of genre, what would it be? And I was hoping um, you wouldn't say RPG for PlayStation. Imagine if Nintendo could say they are the RPG console. Then they would get. They, they would, would be good. They would. They would get stuff. Mm. They would things. They would. They would. But um, no, I think um, PlayStation is kidding it in that regard. Yeah. Anyway, let's wrap up this video here. Guys, thank you for tuning into the channel as always and checking out our content. And yeah, same as before in that video, let us know what you think. Are you excited for the Nintendo NX? Are you interested in Nintendo right now? Or um, do you ha- um, do you think they should just give up? Anyway, whatever your thoughts are, share it with us down below. And as always, thank you for supporting the Arnolds. Take care. Peace. Okay.